Welcome back to Dungeon Brew. Today we're going to be talking about Diesel Punk. Stay tuned. Welcome to Dungeon Brew. Hey everyone, welcome back to Dungeon Brew. Today we're going to be talking about Diesel Punk. Last week we covered Steampunk. Uh, so Joshua, if you would like us to, or like to get us started on a definition for Diesel Punks to, to kind of give us some framing, I would appreciate that. Sure. So when I think of diesel punk, I think the real dividing line between it and steampunk is thinking about a time frame. Uh, diesel punk is usually post World War One, even World War Two. It does have um, more technology that's usually driven throughout the setting that you're developing. Uh, diesel, of course, would be maybe your primary source of energy that you're utilizing. But there's also sometimes some elements of like electricity that are utilized within the world too. And for me, that's kind of the real defining factor between the two. The other piece is that in a diesel punk setting, while I know I mentioned this in the steampunk, uh, that there's usually this dystopian feeling, Diesel punk has more of a dystopian feeling than steampunk. It's almost like technology and war is ravaging the world and it's leading it towards this dark end that it's not going to be able to escape from. Right. And that's, I think a lot of that has to do with just the framing for the era that it's, it's sitting in, you know, it's world war one to world war two. And you've got the, uh, the great depression, like right in the middle of that, um, and then in, in the U.S. in particular, it's like during the 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 uh, during the Great Depression, like right after that, you had the Dust Bowl, which resulted in just a lack of food and a lack of resources. So it's it's a very much a period of of strife and um, a, a lack of of resources and everything about that is very dystopian just in the sense that you had people who were struggling to be able to you know find food or or find work or find anything uh for survivability yeah in, in my mind it's almost having this world set up where there's blimps you know going across the sky men are being pulled off to war there's been a new change maybe societal expectations and who's the workforce is going to be how things are going to be developed uh, you have you know children that are starving on the streets uh, a sense of despondency and decadence that's just weighing heavily on every aspect of society every institution and bring you know me i'm all about the story but bringing this to life through the course of your storytelling and dropping your characters into this uh, type of environment, I think is what really lends itself to this diesel punk setting. Um, they, they should feel the same weight on their shoulders as they're traveling through and be faced with the same hardships as the citizens that maybe they're either fighting to protect that they're being heroes for, or maybe they're <laughs> you're playing an evil party. You're, you're kind of putting them underneath your thumb and utilizing these in order to gain power and status yeah and i think it's very important to lean, lean into the aesthetic of diesel punk uh it's a lot dirtier i would say than something like steampunk um, filthy <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean <laughs> steampunk we talked about how you're getting the industrial era and there's factories and all that type of thing um diesel punk you start to get into the burning of fossil fuels which is you just you, there's there's filthy, you know, polluted rivers. There is the skies, especially over cities, have this perpetual black, dark smog that exists. Um, you have war machines that are traveling down the roads that are just billowing clouds of black smoke and the, the airplanes and stuff flying overhead that are doing the same. So there's kind of this always blackish, grayish, just kind of heavy feeling that exists over everything. You couple that with some of the stuff we were talking about before with the lack of food and, 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 and that type of thing. You have people, you know, living in the streets because they don't have access to it. Uh, the people who can work are working jobs that are just, you know, horrendous and hard on them. Um, everything about it should be pretty dismal. <laughs> <laughs> Great way to bring this video at the end of the series. Yeah, it, it right. You guys all leaving you all on a point of uh, sadness. But um, one of the things that I 
I always think of this as an example, and I know this is more apocalyptic in nature in terms of a setting, but Waterworld really kind of fits that diesel punk feeling for me, mm-hmm. even though it's future technologies. Uh, it, well, I guess it's not future because they're kind of falling back to diesel <laughs> as a primary right. use, but, but it's well set into the future as this apocalyptic dystopian type of state. And that for me is a really nice video to watch in terms of inspiration to build a world like this for my characters. And, and, well, and so since we're talking inspiration, um, Howl's Moving Castle, which is a, a book, but it's also a movie. It's made by uh, Ghibli. I'm going to mispronounce it. Ghibli. Ghibli. Ghibli Studios. Um, but it is a, a mix match of uh, a kind of a diesel punk world along with magic. So you have wizard. Either it's a, in a war state. Um, you have two nations that are going back and forth and the powerful wizards that still exist in this world are being called to lend their magics to the cause. But you pretty much always have the uh, World War II style bombing occurring. So you're hearing explosions and bombs in the background throughout it. Uh, there are flying machines that are billowing black smoke like I talked about before. And there's just this general aesthetic that exists throughout that that world where um there is war there are people who are trying to live through this and uh, there it still incorporates magic in a meaningful way which i find to be very very interesting that's fascinating i haven't actually read that before it that sounds like that'd be interesting to use that as a source of inspiration mm-hmm. you just process it for a minute <laughs> as you continue to talk about something else before that, that sounds fascinating i haven't seen it before um but, but yeah, uh, there's a lot that I think that we shared in our steampunk video that came before this one that I think probably lends itself well to the same discussion and different elements you want to consider. You know, warfare, uh, building your culture, where your cities are set up. Um, another example I think of is maybe like the Judge Dread, which I know, again, is apocalyptic, but it's mega cities that, again, has that smog and that, that uh, sense of um, just despondency that kind of exists within the world where you have like these out layered areas where there's cannibals that live and and people that are outside of civilization that are dangerous to be around. I think there's a lot of different ways that you can incorporate a diesel punk feel um, and changing the setting around to still have that same sense that you can lead your characters through. It's just being creative in the way that you want to do it. And then, of course, just taking into consideration uh, what types of elements you want to have in terms of mechanics that you'd want to include too. Um, We've done a lot of Uh, worlds where there's wild magic that exists out in deserts when you're traveling or across you know uh, these these vast landscapes that are dangerous there are volcanic areas that again can uh, can sit that ash and uh, emit smoke into the air to kind of give you that dark feel of things raining down around you Um, i don't know other thoughts john uh, I think mechanics is an important one to click on uh, or, or, or to key in on, particularly when, particularly when you're talking about things like incorporating guns, because guns are more meaningful in a diesel punk than they were in steampunk. So steampunk, you know, you're just getting into it. Most of your weapons are single shot or double shot. You're, it, it's not a huge thing. It takes time to reload them. When you're talking about diesel punk, you're getting into semiotic and automatic weapons that have a decent, you know, clip to them, potentially. Uh, you're, I mean, you have the inclusion of things like the Tommy gun during this time period. So uh, what does that look like mechanically within the world? And um, how does it how does it affect things like uh, how, how is the damage going to look? And, and, and again, there are other systems for this. Uh, fifth edition in particular doesn't have a whole lot of information. There's some stuff in the DMG that talks about weapons and talks about firearms, but you may have to start dipping into other systems to be able to find mechanics that make sense if you're still trying to use fifth edition as a platform for this type of setting. And there are some source books that are out there that may not be directly with fifth edition. I know mm-hmm. when we used to play 3.5, I would. Um, borrow from other types of source books that kind of had futuristic play styles. I ran a zombie campaign at one point where we had different classes like a gunner and a demolitionist. And, uh, D20 um, a sca- modern, I think, is what it was. Yeah. That uh, sounds very familiar, yeah. And, and we utilize things like that to borrow information to run you guys through a zombie apocalyptic, almost Red Dawn type of setting where you had uh, foreign nations dropping in, parachuting in, dropping bombs while you were also dealing with this uh, infectious disease that was spreading throughout the land and causing, you know, people to rise back from the dead. And it became a very exciting setting to run. Um, but I am just saying there are other source material out there that you can utilize that have got great mechanics around gear, 
vehicles and weapons that you could incorporate into your own campaign. Yeah, the, the homebrew community is is very deep at this point, which is nice. So uh, you shouldn't have any trouble finding mechanics if you're looking for a leg up and trying to bring this type of setting to life. Um, there's a few other things that I'm sure that we could hit on. Uh, we've talked about economy a little bit, just in terms of the lack of resources and the lack of availability when it comes to mechanics and that type of thing. Uh, if you're talking about using guns, you could also talk about maybe the expense involved in getting things like bullets. So that might be a limiting factor that you choose to include, um, that at some point that it's like, yeah, you've got guns, but finding ammunition for those guns may be difficult, particularly during wartime, or it's cost prohibitive. Uh, it doesn't make sense for the players to constantly just be, you know, spraying <laughs> their Tommy gun into uh, a crowd of enemies or something like that. Uh, you also want to capitalize on things like medicine. At this point, it has become a deciding factor. Uh, there probably isn't a whole lot of magical healing or magical options that are included in the world. Uh, magic most likely is a rare type thing. Uh, a low magic setting lends itself much, much better. Um, or a low magic system lends itself better to a diesel punk setting than a high magic one. Uh, unless you're doing something along the lines of, a, you know, maybe that's the orientation of the war. You've got high magic nation and a high technology nation, and that's where your diesel punk fits in. Which I think could be a very fascinating way of incorporating both of those things into one world or one setting. Yeah, I, I'm thinking of other sources of inspiration as, as you're talking about these things that are coming to mind. I'm starting to find that I have a type in the course of us having this conversation. Like, <laughs> my next thought is like, oh, Mad Max is a great resource for like limited ammunition and how you have different mega centers that are set up. But again, I know that's apocalyptic in nature. So I but apologize. It is, it yours. is very much the same way as Waterworld, though. It is very much yeah. a diesel punk style setting in which fuel is a very major resource and uh yeah it, it definitely falls into that diesel punk era it's diesel apocalyptic but we've talked about mixing and matching genres before so that makes a lot of sense actually yeah um resources i think is a great thing other i'm trying to think of other elements we had in our world building series that you might want to consider um the the next piece that probably stands out to me the most is just government really, in how you're setting up your civilizations. And if you have totalitarian governments, if you have democratic republics, how they're managing resources, how they're dishing them out, how they're handling the, the type of challenges that you're throwing at them so that civilization and society can still exist. They may not be thriving, but how are they managing with the new restraints that they have with the world's resources and the technology coming about in the way that it is? Right. Well, and I do want to point out that since this this era does extend itself up to World War II, we were talking about getting somewhat into the atomic era, so you can play with those ideas as well. Um, whether and, and that may also look almost Fallout like in a certain sense because it, it that's like 1950s ish. Um, generally speaking, in terms of like the technological uh, time stamp. But World War II is the beginning of the atomic era in terms of that being a resource and the implications that go into having that type of destructive power existing in the world. Yep. And I have a, more, more inspirations jumping to my mind and I, I, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go. Uh, other things that you want to talk about, I guess, on diesel punk. Uh, I don't think that there's a, really a whole lot to mention. Um, like I said, I, I think a lot of it is the aesthetic to get your, your characters in the mindset of what this world is like, making sure that your mechanics reflect the aesthetic. So if you're going to, you know, do this type of world, you need it to feel like that world. And that's usually a big piece of it. Because at that point, you can create player buy-in. You can get them on board with whatever is going to go on in the world. You need to make decisions about character classes that make sense. Uh, looking towards more modern, it's going to make more sense than looking towards some of the traditional classes you're going to find in something with like a high fantasy setting. Um, unless you've got some way of melding those things together in a way that makes a whole lot of sense, which I, I personally, I think I would struggle to do to, you know, it's, it, 
Steampunk, we talked about having your barbarian running alongside your gentleman. That's still starting to feel like it it mi- mixes and matches okay, but once you get into diesel punk, you're starting to go a little bit farther afield from that. Um, you're talking about incorporating things like armor that's supposed to be stopping bullets. You're getting into a, an era in which magic is probably not as prevalent, and um, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to carry a sword into a, a fight with somebody who's got a Tommy gun. Um, you start to get that the, the suspension of disbelief starts to break down, I think at that point um so make sure that you are incorporating the things that make sense for the setting you're trying to establish yeah i was thinking about this when we made the steampunk video that at the point that you have weapons being carried by persons in the course of a diesel punk setting it's probably more of a an indicator of status or rank and not something that's actually useful so you may have your general carrying a sword or you might have you know, a low rank peon carrying a dagger because it's a memorabilia of his grandfather or something, but it's no longer purposeful within the course of gameplay or especially battle. Yeah, I mean, they were still using bayonets, you know, World War One and World War Two uh, for trench warfare and World War One in particular, but um, you were still using bayonets. It still had, it, it was still incorporated. It was still a function of of what was going on during war warfare. Um, but it generally was not the first line of, of defense. It was not the thing that you, you, you didn't start with the bayonet and then fall back to the, to the gun. You started with the gun and the bayonet was your last resort type thing. So, um, you, you, those things need to be kept in mind as well. Yeah. You might have a dagger. It's a utility thing. It, it's used as a weapon as a last resort. It is not the thing that they start with. Yeah. I, I guess last thing that I want to think about is just think of your players when you're going into a setting like this. There are a lot of video games and um, other types of media that can be utilized that people are familiar with. It probably gives them an idea of this setting. But in the world of TTRB RPGs, for the most part, people are thinking of um, more medieval fantasy. And so springing a diesel punk setting upon them may have a slight learning curve as they learn lessons like your bayonet is the last resort. You're not going to just rush into battle with your bayonet. You don't want all your characters dying at level one because they don't understand uh, maybe the mechanics or how to approach the course of gameplay because they're so used to playing in a different setting that they don't think about how a different mechanic or a different way of strategy may need to be utilized within a diesel punk setting. Sure. All right. Well, uh, we appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, If you haven't already, please subscribe and make sure to like the video and we will catch you for our next series. All right. Oh, and drugs.